Welcome in everyone. I'm Kathy Mock, Board of Education member. We are excited to be presenting a special video series to recognize the accomplishments of our amazing Falcon alumni. We will be doing these presentations periodically, and this is our premier presentation, and we are happy to welcome Ken Jack, you back. Thank you, Kathy. To kick it off, my friend. <laughs> What year did you graduate, Ken? I graduated in 1964. All right, and can you tell our viewers at home what extra activities did you participate in while you were at Fitch? We didn't have a, a lot back then, but I was uh, ran track uh, my junior and senior year, and pretty much that's it for me as far as getting involved in some of the clubs. And there were, like I said there weren't a lot at that time. All right, so I, I always like to ask this question. Uh, of folks, especially in their education experience here, especially at Fitch. So was there a person or an event in Austintown schools that impacted your career path? Yes, I had three people. Uh, my first grade teacher, Dorothy Honey, who was later on a guidance counselor when I was in high school, uh, Jean Chepke, and probably the most influential was Jim DeRamo, was my English teacher and later on our superintendent and I served with him when I was on the board. Okay, and those are names that are very <laughs> well known in the history of Fitch High School. So can you tell the folks at home what vocation that you did go into because of those people who influenced you so very much? Uh, I always was a hands-on. My dad was a chemist and then he built homes so I kind of got interested in the vocational end of it mm -hmm. and I took all the the shop classes I could, even the electrical class. And uh, when I graduated, I was 17 and couldn't get a job anywhere because you had to be 18. To, and, you know, mo most of the people weren't going into college then. There was maybe 20% at the most okay. if that. Uh, it was more vocational training back then. But I know there's a bigger story of your career path. Would you talk about that? And uh, thank you for your service. Oh, you're welcome. Um, Yes, yeah, so I got graduated and I enlisted in the Marine Corps at 17, a week after high school. And I really didn't turn 18 till halfway the following year. I was in the Marine Corps like five, six months when I turned 18. And I scored very high on my mechanical aptitude test uh, when I went in to, uh, for the recruiter. And that allowed me to qualify for aviation. And after boot camp and advanced infantry training, I went to Memphis for aviation school, and then was when I had to take uh, electrical physics, mechanical physics, uh, all kind of different classes uh, based on uh, the different fields you were going to choose. And I choose hydraulics, and I had to get a uh, clearance. I didn't know what for. Mm -hmm. they, they had five volunteers, and I was one of them. And we ended up. I ended up at Quantico, Virginia, at uh, Marine Helicopter Squadron One, which flies the president. It's codenamed HMX-1, and I served there from 65 to 68 under President Johnson. I was hoping you would tell that story. I, I know you shared that with me one time, uh, but that had to be such a thrilling experience for you to do that. I only know two other people in the whole Youngstown area that served on at HMX. There's a couple other to serve at Camp David, but it's a very select group now. Okay. So, um, with the military experience, I just have to ask this too. I know that you go above and beyond because you are a veteran. Can you just talk a little bit about that, what you have done with your veteran experience? Yes. Um, I got, In the school, I know you've yeah, impacted that I've so gotten very involved. Much. Uh, uh, you know, I do run that Patriots Day. Uh, I started a lunch with a veteran here, and probably for 12 years, uh, I was on the Veterans Committee for uh, Veterans Day and uh, you know getting that going and uh, uh, I've done stuff with the choir getting them down to Quantico Virginia to sing they, they mm -hmm. sang at HMX1 and they're the very first choir ever to sing there and they also were the first group to be allowed in after the pandemic. And what a great celebration that was held here at Austintown Fitch High School last Sunday uh, the choir celebrating 50 years Yes. And you introduced the choir. Yes, it was a great honor to introduce the concert choir. I, I, I just, I'll do anything for them, for what they do for veterans for 50 years. And that's, you know, it, it's, it's giving back to your community and, and veterans. And I do that a lot. 
I know you do. So um, I know that you do a lot of things, but what do you like to do outside of work for fun? Uh, fun is uh, <laughs> uh, when I was able to, I, I ran for like 50 years uh, to get some of the stress off. That's a good stress reliever. And now I bike ride and I walk the bike trails, you know, up by Kirk Road. And when I'm home and relaxing, uh, I, I tinker with stuff, but mostly I listen to my music collection. I'm a music guy, an audio guy, and it's just nice to throw on a... And I know you've uh, done a little DJ on the side, too. Well. Yeah, yeah, back in the old days, I, <laughs> I, know. I was well known for, I know. for that. So tell us about your family, Ken. Uh, well, my grandfather bought a farm in West Austintown, which is still there on Turner Road. And uh, I kind of almost grew up there. I lived on Northwest, and my dad graduated in 39. And ever since then, we've had a, a close relative, a first cousin or, or brother, sister, uh, grandkids. My family graduate from Fitch High School. And uh, I have... Uh, my, I have a sister that uh, just retired from Worcester. Uh, she taught AP biology, and now she runs a STEM program for the county there, uh, early placement. And she's a, a also uh, is the student teacher director at Ashton College. And then uh, I have I had a, uh, a son and a daughter. Mm -hmm. My daughter actually teaches fourth grade here at Austin Town, and my son is the de deputy director of the city of Chesapeake audit department. Uh, he moved down there some years ago, so he's the auditor down there in charge of the, she's like number two guy in charge. So, so my goodness, um, Austin Town Fitch Schools have made a great impact, not just on you, but so many in your family, and they're highly successful, yes. as are you. Uh, do you have any advice to anyone in our community as to what they should do? Yes, uh, my family always gave back and, and, and it wasn't given back and then asked for something in return. And I, I really inherited that trait when I got back, and that's why I got involved with veterans. And I, I really got involved with Austin Town Schools in 1970 with Gene Chepke helping, helping them out in an athletic facility. And I became a track official. And I've, I mean, I've done things at all these schools and got involved with the choir and, the, you know, Veterans Day, uh, lunch with the vet, and then uh, the, the um, uh, Purple Star Room. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's gratifying. It's gratifying to give back. You know, I, I just my recommend that anybody out there, uh, if they want to get involved in some charity or group. Right. Uh, for me, it was Austin Town Schools, and I did serve on the board twice for a total of 20 years. So that was a, it was a gratifying experience for me. And I had the pleasure of serving with Ken on the board of education. So truly, truly an advocate for the Austin Town Schools. Um, I just want to thank you for everything that you have done in the past and are continuing to do, paying it forward to the present to Austin Town Schools, but even the community as well. And I wish you the very best and continued success. And I want to close out and just say I hope, folks, that you will tune in to our Falcon Media Alumni Spotlights that we will be doing. And we have amazing graduates here in Austin Town Fitch High School and what they are doing and continue to do to serve our schools and our community. This is Kathy Mock, Board of Education member, signing off.